I talked about this a little while back that the WWE had a major problem for WrestleMania 31, and that is that they didn't have a main event for that show. And I still believe that to be true. And I think that manifests itself in a way at the Royal Rumble, which is where the road to WrestleMania really begins. And I've talked about this before. The fact that the WWE doesn't have a clear-cut option or a clear-cut choice to win the 2015 Royal Rumble. To me, this is a big problem. This is a huge problem, a significant problem. A problem that the WWE has created, cultivated, nurtured, and grown to the point where it's become a bit of a monster. Now, what I've seen from the WWE in the past few weeks and what I've observed makes me almost wonder if they even care who wins the 2015 Royal Rumble. And I really, truly mean that. To me, when you're getting in a position to get somebody ready to win the Royal Rumble, you want to do a few things with them, or at least one or a couple of them. You want to engage them in a really hot, compelling storyline that gets the fans really behind them, either behind him cheering for him or behind him in terms of hating him, him getting heat. And I don't see anybody that's really doing that at this point in time in terms of the possible options to win the Rumble. You may also want to see a character have some signature big moments and be featured like a big-time star. Well, they've been focused so much on the past few weeks on really building up Seth Rollins that I think the WWE has really dropped the ball here and not given any real um, significant signature moments to anybody in terms of potential Royal Rumble winners. I also uh, believe that you need to have momentum as a character. And out of so many of the likely suspects in terms of who could potentially win the 2015 Royal Rumble, it seems like none of them have any momentum whatsoever. I don't care who it is. And it just makes me look at this Sunday, the 2015 Royal Rumble, while some will sit there and try to spin it so optimistically and positively as, well, there's all types of options. You don't know where the WWE can go. Well, that doesn't make it good. That doesn't make it good at all. That means that they haven't planned things out well. That means that they haven't decided. That means, frankly, that they don't know what the fuck they're doing, and even more importantly, perhaps don't even care. And I truly believe at this point in time that the WWE doesn't care who wins the 2015 Royal Rumble. Like, let's look at some of the usual suspects, names that have been thrown out there that potentially win this year's Royal Rumble. You look at Ryback and Dolph Ziggler. Instead of using that precious TV time in between TLC and the Royal Rumble to build these guys up and give these guys some momentum, maybe engage them in a really hot, compelling storyline, give them some signature moments where the fans could really get behind them and accept the fact that this is a legit possibility, they decided to have Ryback and Ziggler be kayfabe fired as part of a crappy storyline involving John Cena and the Authority. That's not giving these guys signature moments. That's putting all the emphasis on Cena, again. That's not sitting there and building any momentum for any of these guys. It's just sitting there and taking them off of TV at a time where they desperately, badly need to be on TV. It was stupid. They didn't even wait, what, two weeks to give some payoff back to this freaking angle? This is that short-sighted ridiculousness of the WWE, a reflection of losing patience, a reflection of being out of touch. Oh, my God, a reflection of being Vince McMahon. So Ryback and Ziggler at this point in time have absolutely zero business winning the 2015 Royal Rumble. Another candidate might be Dean Ambrose. And you would think for a guy that was doing so well, in particular in the second half of 2014, getting himself over like a million bucks and being a different type of babyface for the WWE, one with an edge, one with a kind of loose cannon type of feel to him, if you will, that the WWE would have done more to really get the fire going with him. Give him some signature moments. Really put him in key spots. Make him feel like a star. Give him some momentum. Well, instead, they give you a disappointing payoff to his feud with Seth Rollins. Then they engage him in the feud with Bray Wyatt, where every step along the way, frankly, it's really about building up Bray Wyatt for something else. You give Dean Ambrose some stupid psych evaluation last week, and then you're pretty much done with it. The guy just doesn't have momentum. He's not getting those signature moments that he needs. He's not engaged in any type of hot, compelling, interesting storyline that really stokes the flames for people to sit there and say that this guy needs to win. Like at least last year, what Daniel Bryan had going on with the authority, you know, and even when he mixed in Bray Wyatt, 
there was enough there to where I could understand why people would think he's the right option and he's the right choice to win the Royal Rumble at that time. He's a character with a lot of momentum. He's a character that is engaged in a hot storyline that could continue and get stronger as you go towards WrestleMania season. You're featuring him in big spots and big moments. It would have made a lot of sense to have Daniel Bryan win the 2014 Royal Rumble. Well, they're not doing any of that with Dean Ambrose, and they're not doing any of that with Daniel Bryan. I wonder why you would bring back Daniel Bryan if you were going to bring him back like this. I mean, you're freaking sending Kane at him. You're having him wrestle Bray Wyatt on Raw. You've given him no real momentum. You're not really giving him any signature type of moments at all. You're not doing anything to really build momentum behind this character. If this was the case, then why not save Daniel Bryan for the night after WrestleMania 31, where the possibilities could be endless in terms of what direction you want to send him? At this point in time, it seems like with so many other guys, there's really no clear-cut direction, and that's not a good thing. They don't know what they're going to do with Daniel Bryan. They don't know what they should be doing with Daniel Bryan. They don't know where they want to go with Daniel Bryan. And to me... It makes it stupid to have him win the Royal Rumble. Just like, frankly, at this point, it almost makes it stupid for anybody to win this freaking Royal Rumble. What have they done with Daniel Bryan over the past few weeks that indicates that he should be the guy to win the 2015 Royal Rumble? I don't think they've done anything at all. And then you look at Roman Reigns, the chosen one, if you will. The one that was going to have this opportunity handed to him on a silver platter. Somewhere along the way, they didn't really do a good job of teaching Roman Reigns how to talk on the mic. Uh, you have Roman Reigns go out for a few months, which definitely hurt because he didn't get those signature moments, that signature storyline that could really take him to that next level. But now here over the past few weeks, we've decided to have him cut a Superman promo and talk about Suffer and Succotash and Jack and the Magic Beanstalk and all this ridiculous dumb dick shit that all the while he's engaged in a feud with the big show who is becoming like Kane in the fact that he sucks the heat in life out of anything that he's involved with. And obviously he's doing the same thing to Roman Reigns. What type of momentum does Roman Reigns have to where you could sit there and have him win the 2015 Royal Rumble? What type of momentum does a Roman Reigns have to even consider that a realistic possibility? What type of hot, engaging storyline is he a part of? What type of real signature moments have you given him over the past few weeks where you can sit there and say, this is the guy that should be the 2015 Royal Rumble winner? You haven't gotten any of that at all. Just like so many other guys with Ryback and Ziggler and Ambrose and Daniel Bryan, they've dropped the ball with Roman Reigns as well. How could this company be so obtuse? How could Vince McMahon be so idiotic to set up this company in this type of situation? It's perhaps because this company doesn't care. Another option might be Randy Orton. Well, he has no momentum because he's been off of TV for the most part for the past couple of months. They're more concerned about making movies than they are with making good, compelling television with their core freaking competency product. And here's a guy that you've turned him babyface, but you've done nothing to really build any momentum with him going back to the babyface side. You've done nothing to really give him signature moments. You've really done none of that whatsoever. All the while, you have a lot of compelling options in terms of you could send him at Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, John Cena at WrestleMania. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, <laughs> but again, Orton doesn't even really seem to fit at this point. It doesn't really seem to make sense. You're not really going to go down a legend route with Sting or Undertaker and talking about that one last shot and that one last opportunity, which in this case this year, based off of the ridiculously poor job the WWE has done in building anybody else and getting anybody else up to that point to where they could be ready, that might have been the way to go. Having somebody like Sting win the Royal Rumble and doing that one last chance type of storyline heading into WrestleMania. Going with Undertaker winning the Royal Rumble, giving him one more shot at Brock Lesnar, giving him a shot at revenge, making it a retirement match. This is Taker's last chance, his last grasp for glory, if you will. That's a storyline that can work, especially with the fans' love of gravitating towards the older, more established guys, especially with today's product. But they haven't even set it up where they can do that very well at all. Frankly, the only character that's been engaged in any type of good storyline, even though I'd argue that he really hasn't been, but especially the guy that has momentum and has been given some signature moments at this point in time would be Bray Wyatt. And you're more concerned about building him up for an Undertaker match that seems to be a year too late and off the mark, as opposed to having him win the Royal Rumble. The one guy that you've actually built up kind of nicely over the past couple of months in one way and still not done that great of a job, you've just had him win some matches, 
is Bray Wyatt, the guy that you know damn good and well this company's not going to go with come the Royal Rumble. It just absolutely makes more, no sense. It seems like this company has been so set on trying to get the most that they can out of Brock Lesnar with the limited amount of time they have and getting as much spotlight onto John Cena as they possibly can and pounding Seth Rollins down your throat and focusing solely on that triple threat match at the Royal Rumble for the title that they've completely forgotten about the 2015 Royal Rumble match. It legitimately is like the WWE doesn't know, more importantly, doesn't care. If you think I'm off the mark, you let me know down in the comments section. But based off of what you've seen the past few weeks, and based off of what has been done with so many of these characters that should, in theory, be in a position to potentially win this moment and kind of grab that brass ring, if you will, or at least, if nothing else, be ready to take that step to the next level, who the fuck's ready? Nobody's ready. Because the WWE, in my opinion, doesn't care.